Hi, good afternoon. It is 12 noon, um, so we will get started. But first, I just want to make sure, um, are you able to hear me? If I could get like a thumbs up or a reaction or a yes in the chat or a yes. We will give it a few minutes for more people to join and then to get confirmation on the audio and my colleague um, will be joining soon too. April, I see you just popped in. Are you able to hear me? I'm waiting confirmation on audio. Anna, this is Cindy. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. I just wanted to make sure. Perfect. Um, I'm trying, my colleague is trying to get in. Um, the exit, if you guys could refresh me, left hand side. Scroll all the way down on the left hand side to exhibitors. Okay. And I just see him. Hi, Warren. Thank you. Okay, so sorry, there's um, the chat in the Zoom and then there's also the chat in the Hoova app. So Warren and I were trying to be able to cover both. So um, uh, we wanted to cover all of our basis, um, but we are gonna get started. I think more people will jump in and out. This is, we definitely wanna answer all of your questions. Um, while we're here today, we do have some slides, um, but there's a ton of questions coming into the chat and then we'll have the opportunity to um, uh, um, uh, you can come off mute and answer them as well. Um, so I will just do, and I know we just came from the, the elevator speech practice. Um, so we're gonna give you our elevator speeches too in our long introduction, just so you can get to know us a little bit. And it's always great for us to, oh, and I apologize, you can't even see me. I'm so sorry. There we go. I was, I have my face on so many different screens. I wanted to make sure um, I am here. So my apologies for that. Um, so my name is Anna Helbig. I'm a program manager with our workforce development team at Advocate Aurora Health. I've been with Advocate Aurora Health for going on three years, and I joined workforce development in January. My background is I have a bachelor's in social work from Marquette University um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and I, act, I practice as a social worker in healthcare at Children's Hospital Wisconsin for many years before I recognized steps in my own life that I wanted to take um, to do a career shift to prevent burnout for myself. Um, so through a lot of self-reflection and a lot of really great mentors that I gained through networking, um, I went back to school um, while working at Children's to get my master's in business administration from Cardinal Stokes University, which is also a greater Milwaukee area school. From there, I transitioned my career and pivoted um, to the business side of healthcare, um, and I worked at a disability serving nonprofit that had um, a healthcare aspect to it and an independent living center. Um, and then I transitioned to Advocate Aurora just about three years ago. Um, beyond that, um, I have a passion for serving people and empowering people with disabilities. Um, I play soccer and tennis. I love to hike and camp, um, and I raise chickens and my dog um, in the greater Milwaukee area. Um, as our team spans both of uh, our larger footprint um, within the Africa Aurora footprint. So it was a little bit longer of an elevator speech. There wasn't an ask incorporated, but I wanted to have you get to know who I am a little bit. I and mean, I'm gonna turn it over to Warren to do the same. Good afternoon, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Perfect. Thanks, Anna. Uh, my name is Warren Riley. I'm a consultant on the workforce development team. I have been with Advocate Aurora since about April. Um, so about eight months now, uh, I took a roundabout way into getting into workforce development in the greater human resources area. Uh, I got a bachelor's degree in psychology from Western Illinois University um, and immediately began working in a behavioral hospital for children and adolescents. Uh, it was acute care. Uh, from there, while there, actually, I transitioned into education still in behavioral health uh, and from there worked in a high school doing some behavioral health things and then some community outreach things. Uh, from working in community outreach, I transitioned to Loyola, Loyola University of Chicago, 
uh, where I was a community outreach resourcer uh, and actually worked specifically with a middle school uh, as the representative from Loyola. It was at that time that I was considering grad school and I decided to go back to grad school uh, and get a master's degree in uh, business because I knew that I didn't want to practice psychology and I wasn't sure where I wanted to go, but I knew that it was something on the administrative side because I had gotten a taste of that uh, from those opportunities. Uh, while in school and working at Loyola, I got offered a position to go back to the hospital where I started, uh, working much more on the administrative side, still in education where I would still get to work with patients, but I was involved a lot more in the administrative decision making of the education department and the greater hospital as a whole. Um, while I was doing that, I actually finished grad school, got my MBA from Concordia University of Chicago, and immediately started a doctoral program, also getting a doctorate in business, uh, because I do have a goal of reaching business leadership. And I felt that that was going to help kind of fast track me and give me some skills. And I do also want to teach uh, at the undergraduate and master's and doctoral level as well. And so I knew having a terminal degree was important to do that. So I'm currently pursuing that. I am about to be done with my fourth semester of a nine semester program, so just about halfway. Um, and then from the hospital, I actually was able to transition into the human resources to workforce development because it kind of has a combination of the things I've been doing with community outreach. And then I work on some uh, youth programs. And then there's obviously a mental health component because we work in hospital as well as physical health. So workforce development is kind of that bridge for me to get from patient care to more human resources. So excited to be here today. Thanks, Lauren. And so sort of, we'll get into the why we did that to talk a little bit about our career path, because you may be wondering like, well, that's a little bit more than an elevator speech when we talked about the why. Um, I went over the slide very briefly during that two minute um, pitch. But again, as an advocate of our health, we're um, over 74, we're probably 75,000 team members strong right now. We have our 29th hospital being built um, to launch in February of 2022. We're a top 10 not-for-profit healthcare system. So that not-for-profit um, is kind of important in there. So we are a nonprofit as we operate. Um, and we have th over 3 million unique patients. Um, and just like other healthcare systems said, um, with our 300 million patients and our 500 points of care, we really want to reach into that community and be an organization that um, looks and is embedded into our community along not only with our community benefits, but with um, our, our providers looking like our community members as well. So I said, I'll tell you why Warren and I gave our little bit of our backgrounds and where we're at. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to him. And the why is sort of on this slide and knowing that the career tracks where you start isn't where you end up. Just like Warren and I shared, um, ours got us um, where we started is not where we ended up and it's definitely not where we're going to end up in the future as well. So we use this in a lot of our programs um, and as Warren goes through it, um, really kind of picture yourself um, and where you want to be um, and he will um, and he does the best job at going over it. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Thank you, Anna. So this is what we call our healthcare career map. Um, and you don't really have to pay attention to the specific jobs on this map as much as the kind of categorization of the jobs. Uh, these specific jobs, we kind of change as we're talking to different people. But the main thing you need to look at is that in our organization, like Anna said, over 74,000 employees, uh, one of the attractions for an organization of this size is the ability to move. If you were paying attention in my kind of elevator pitch, you noticed that I moved a lot. And it wasn't because I wasn't necessarily happy where I was. It was that there was no room for me to move up. And the only way for me to move up was to leave. And so part of the reason I chose Advocate was that ability to move up and stay in the same organization. So we have four main tracks uh, within our organization. The top blue one is nursing. The purple one, kind of purple magenta one, is non-nursing but patient care. Uh, option three is professional, which is where Anna and I are, and then option four is support services. And so you can start on any of these tracks, but what's cool about them is while they do seem linear in design, you actually can jump from track to track. So kind of think of it as like lanes on a highway where I'm in this particular lane, but if I'd like to change lanes, it is possible. So starting with the nursing track, that's literally anything that is nursing. So from CNAs, medical assistants, to nurses, if you're a master's degree level nurse, if you're a doctoral degree level nurse, we're still considering that nursing. Um, and so you're gonna start off in that basic patient care, which is in phase one, that associate phase. So you'll notice these gray columns that get darker as we move from left to right. Um, so you start there, 
And then if you are not interested in leadership, which a lot of people are not, some people get into nursing and want to be a nurse for their entire life, more power to you. The most you might be is maybe a shift supervisor, um, the charge nurse on a unit if there are multiple nurses, uh, but you can stay in that nursing track. If you want to be interested, if you're interested in leadership, there are kind of two directions you can go. You can move into that frontline leader, that manager, and then the executive level of nursing. Or if you would like to, you can kind of jump down to the green professional track and still be working in nursing, but not in the direct patient care. Uh, there are a lot of people that Anna and I work with, especially nursing that are nurse recruiters uh, and our nurse trainers that are not actually directly working with patients, but they have that nursing background and are still working with nursing in that capacity. We see that quite a bit. Um, if you look at that magenta track, that's going to be more of your allied health, transporters, patient access, patient service rep, where it's kind of like a professional track, but you're still, again, dealing with direct patients. Uh, I'm also going to throw doctors and physicians into that area because they don't kind of have a space, but they are patient care and non-nursing. I know there's a big difference between a patient service rep and a doctor, but for the intents of this, it kind of functions the same in that you can stay in that lane and just be a doctor, or you can move into that frontline leader, the manager, the direct level of service, et cetera. With professional track, it's a little bit different. Most of us don't even work in the hospitals. As you can see, Anna and I are in our homes um, that started due to COVID and out of not just convenience, but kind of what makes sense for the organization, we will not go back into a hospital. So do we occasionally get to go into hospitals and clinics to do different programs or we get to record videos? Yes, however, our main office is our home. And so if you're on that professional track, that's going to happen. I know people who are even site-based. So Anna and I are more on the corporate side. So we work with all the 500 sites of care, all 28 going on 29 hospitals. You might be somebody who you are site-based. So you're working with a particular hospital or in like two or three hospitals in a particular area. You may still work from home some of the time and then go into the office some of the time. So that professional track often is gonna involve working from home depending on what you're doing. Uh, and that one is one that's a little bit harder to move out of unless you're specifically going to go to school. So if I start off in the call center and I wanna be a nurse, then I can go to nursing school and then jump to the nursing track. That's a little bit different than if you're doing the reverse where I was a nurse for 20 years, now I wanna become a nurse recruiter. You don't necessarily have to go back to school because you can use that nursing experience to do that. And then with the support services, a lot of that is how people just kind of what we say get their foot in the door you want to get into a good organization you might take a job in support services and try to work your way up from there maybe you just want to be a lead or a supervisor or a manager of support services but if you're looking to do something more professional on the higher leadership you can do that as well and the way that people jump through these tracks is through various opportunities that we have within the organization. We run multiple programs. Uh, one of them is called Navigate, where we help kind of our frontline workers and maybe more entry-level medical workers get some soft skills training, some actual hard skills training so that they can advance their career. We also have a very robust uh, education, educational assistance program, which we call EdAssist. Uh, and that's a lot of, that's a way that people actually can move their career. We have a member on our team who started as a patient services rep and went from having no degrees when she started advocate to having a bachelor's and two masters and now she works on our team. So she moved from that kind of support services, maybe entry level professional to the more corporate side higher up using some of the programs that we have. A lot of our leaders got here early in their career and they may have been in emerging leaders or programs that we call Peak and Summit that are there to help you get the soft skills training, to be able to advance your career as well. So all of these things are possible. And if you pay attention to phase four, you'll notice that no matter what track you're on, they all kind of look the same. And the point that we're making is that once you get into leadership, you can go anywhere. You can be a director, you can be a vice president, you can be a president, um, you can be kind of on that C-suite track. You wanna be CEO, CEO, CFO, any of those things can happen. And it's kind of one of the benefits of a large organization is when you're starting your career and you have no idea where you wanna go, or you know, I might wanna change what I'm doing, you have that option. I like working in workforce development and human resources, but next year I may wanna work in org development. After that, I might wanna work in leadership development. Maybe I wanna do more site-based. You have those options. Our uh, director actually has bounced back and forth between corporate and site like three or four times because she just, had a leadership opportunity here, had a leadership opportunity there. And so that's actually made her a better leader because she's seen so much more of the organization. And those are some of the things that you can do with an organization of this size. Warren, I think it was important and you actually um, answered some of the questions in the chat. Um, 
the one was, are there opportunities for students to participate in jobs with patient interaction and advocate over our health during the pandemic? So when Warren touched on the support services track, so seeing that um, from, um, you know, so from a support services, you're still interacting with patients. It wouldn't be called patient care, but you have that interaction. Um, and that is something that you can do as a student. So we have a lot of different um, shifts available and then partnering with that at assist like Warren talked about also. So those are some great student roles. But as far as like, if you're thinking if that question was more geared towards student shadows and stuff like that, that is correct. We haven't gone to that um, case by case basis, depending on programs, for example, like radiology schools or rad techs or sonographies, there is a shadow requirement as a part of entrance into that school. So I don't want to say it's no to everything across the board. It's not a black and white answer like that. So that depends. But then we are, we do have roles that are great for students. Transport, just, um, you know, that's, you're interacting with patients, you're being with them. Um, CPR certified and then it, meeting the other job requirements. CNA, um, patient service rep um, or registration like Warren mentioned. So those are great opportunities as a student to then get into that organization and grow. Um, and then Warren, I think you also, I'll, I don't know if you're reading the questions, but you were definitely hitting them. We have two questions coupled about like new grad nurse residency or um, newer undergraduate students into the system because there's a greater need for nurses. Um, so with that, um, on that nursing track specifically, you can see that we have like nurse education and charge nurses. We also have a robust nurse mentoring program. Um, as a part of our onboarding process in general across the board, we have 30, 60, 90 day touch points. Um, so we want to make sure that the, uh, the onboarding process across the board, especially in those, um, those roles like nursing is very robust because we want our team members to have a good start with us um, to retain them. Um, so there are programs and like Warren also mentioned the Navigate and the Emerging Leaders. So once you're in our doors, that opens up for many other programs. Um, in that nursing area as well. So I just wanted to touch on those two um, specifically, Warren, since you um, intentionally or unintentionally answered them. <laughs> it was unintentional, but because <laughs> I had to have it full screen so I could make sure I could read everything. Right. Um, but I am glad that I was able to talk, touch on some of those things while we can kind of look at this. Um, just to add to what Anna said, any opportunity to get into this organization is something that you're going, going to want to take. If it's food service, because you're a student and you don't want to be in food service, that's fine. Work in food service for three years, get paid, use the ed assist. And then when you graduate, go, hey, I've been here for three years. What do you have for me? It's going to be much easier for you to move through the organization than it is to get in. So any way you can get in, especially if you're still a student, I would suggest doing it. Absolutely. So again, good like uh, leeway into what are those opportunities as students. So we sort of have our three buckets. Um, and I know I touched on this again in that two minute pitch, but we wanted to dive a little bit more into that with our undergraduate, our corporate internships, our postgraduate, our administrative fellowships, and our residency with our psychiatric residency. I know um, that might not be anyone in this population, but just wanted to put that out there that we do have that as an opportunity since we aren't a medical teaching hospital, but we do have our own residency program um, of the psych psychiatric residency program that we do, do run. So these are the specific opportunities in our corporate internship program. And again, not only once, I warned not to reiterate, as once you're into the organization, this leads to other opportunities. So these are paid opportunities in your undergraduate level. Um, currently they are, the application is closed for 2022, um, but we will have them again in 2023. But besides just that work experience, um, we always encourage professional development and leadership. So this is one of those like add on bonuses and benefits to this program. Warren, do you want to talk about the professional development and leadership opportunities? I can, and I can also talk about um, a little bit of the corporate internships, because right now I'm in the process of recruiting. As Anna said, uh, that is closed, but we are in the interviewing, reviewing, and moving on process. And so these corporate internships, they take place in the summer. They're typically six weeks, and they're paid, which is, I think, the most important part, uh, because I think free labor, especially for undergraduates, is a thing of the past, and we should do away with it um, and make it more about learning than about just having somebody who can push, push files around and send emails. And so, as Anna said, with our corporate internships, there's a huge focus on professional development because the goal at the end of this is that people may come back multiple years in a row 
And then when they're finished, they're going to get hired with us. And so we want to make sure that while we have them here, we're not only training them on how to be a better person working in a corporation, but also how to work with us specifically and what specifically we're looking for. So you will have conversations and maybe trainings on things like unconscious bias and how to become an executive, how to transition from a student to a professional. Uh, that career ladder that we were just looking at, that it's not ours isn't necessarily a ladder as much as a map because it moves horizontally, but still is similar situation. Um, there's also one-on-one -on -one mentoring and advising as well as having a preceptor. You kind of get both sides of the coin where you have a person who's in charge of you, somebody who's assigned as a mentor. And then of course, because you're an intern, and we are very open to interns, you're gonna have lots of unofficial mentors as well. And I think those relationships and building those relationships and being willing to ask questions and having people who are willing to answer them is extremely important for your experience. And it's something that we're looking to do as well. So if you are in the business space, maybe you know you wanna open a clinic, so you're doing some sort of major that involves both business and direct patient care. This could be a good opportunity to see more of that business side because it is a corporate internship. You're working in the human, the greater human resources department in something specific, whether it is IT, public affairs, some sort of operations, finance, what have you. Uh, that experience can be great depending on what you want to do. Maybe you know I want to be a nurse for 10 years and then I want to be a nurse administrator. This is going to give you some of that experience on the administrative side. While the nursing in your school, you're going to have the clinical to talk about the nursing side. So just making sure you're kind of attacking all of this uh, while you have the opportunity and then going into your career with a full understanding of what uh, can be offered. Absolutely, thanks Lauren. Sort of that next step is that graduate. So the administrative fellowship, we have a very competitive fellowship offering. Again, this is a paid opportunity um, for your postgraduate. Um, we have a wide variety of um, locations, and I did put all of them because there's some, um, you know, travel mobility, depending on where, where you're looking. Um, so we do have a lot in Wisconsin and Illinois in various different groups based on your, your interest. I know um, Donnie O'Donis did um, a shout out for population health um, a, a little bit earlier in the, um, in the day today. So we do have one of those for administrative fellowships. And again, just like Warren said, with our corporate internship, you're gaining experiences beyond that. And this one is a like sort of a tripod model. Um, so you have your executive preceptor, your mentor, and a physician mentor as well. Um, so that threefold. Um, beyond, there's so many other opportunities. And this is a, a more project-based as well. So really getting, um, getting into that more, um, more opportunities. Um, so there's more information on this. Um, our workforce development team does not manage this program, but we are partnered very closely with our leadership development team that does manage this. Um, so we can always connect to that, but we would be amiss if we didn't bring it up because it's very important and it's a great opportunity to grow and advance your career. Um, and as Warren keeps saying, it's getting your foot in the door and through a fellowship or through an internship is a great opportunity to, to do that beyond our entry level programs. Uh, just to add in before you change the slide, uh, with the fellowship program, a couple things to consider is one, this is a year long program, and it's once you have graduated with a master's degree. So a um, master's in business, a master's in public health, a master's in healthcare administration, anything in that realm. Um, and one of the cool things about this is, as Anna said, it's paid. However, at the end, as long as you complete it, you're guaranteed a job in administration. So if you're looking to be a hospital administrator, this is the, the route you want to go because it's going to get you already in administration, you've already worked for a year. And as she said, you have that tripod model. That physician uh, mentor is really, really huge because people like Anna and I don't know much about medicine. We just know about operations. And so having somebody where you can go, these are the decisions I'm being told to make. How does that affect you from the physician side? You have that perspective as well. So it makes you a better leader. But I think the most important part is the guaranteed job, not guaranteed interview, guaranteed position in administration Maybe not at the hospital where you were having your fellowship, but it's somewhere within the uh, the system. So that's something to keep in mind, an eye on as well. And we are currently recruiting for that also. Um, even though our team doesn't manage it, we do get to recruit for it, which is really fun. So we're starting to have those conversations also. So if you have any questions about that, uh, because I've been involved in that process, you can reach out to me and Anna has our contact information at the end. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's um, and it should be in the exhibit, the Hoover app as well. Um, and then the last offering that we, we are presenting today is our psychiatric residency program. This is um, Illinois only, and it's at Advocate Lutheran General. Um, so this is when you're getting your um, doctorate in psychology, your 
I always mess it up one psi B, right? Psi B, psi B. <laughs> the letters confuse me sometimes. Um, so it's a great opportunity to not to get a wide breadth and scope of psychiatric care. So inpatient and partial hospitalization programs, intensive outpatient um, consultation services, outpatient, um, both on the child and the adult side. So we didn't want to touch too much on this. Um, you can always ask us questions on it. Not only is it a little bit of our career passion working in the behavioral health spaces, but also this is a, a urgent and needed role um, within all of behavioral health. Um, so we do have that at our Advocate Lutheran um, General Hospital. Warren, anything else to add? I don't have anything to add for this one. You covered all of it. It's a residency program. If you're getting a doctorate in psych, it's fairly self-explanatory. So as Warren said, we do have our contact information up here. Um, I'm just going to jump into the chat to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, one of the questions is, is there a CMA program offered? And I'm wondering if this is a typo for CC or like a certified medical assistance or CNA. Okay, that's what I was thinking. They're certified medical assistance. Um, I do not believe that we have a program. However, if you are a medical assistant and you're looking to take the certification exam and take any classes, you can use Edisys to pay for that exam and classes that you're taking to prep for that exam. But no, we don't have a specific dedicated CMA program. But if that question is going to see NA program, we have a lot of offering, offerings for that. Um, I know in Wisconsin, we do have one. Um, I'm actually not familiar on the Illinois side, um, but again, just getting your foot in the door and then using that at assistance, at assist, um for that is a great opportunity for that. Um, oh, and there was that CNA question earlier. So I'm interested yes. in CNA and other programs you have to keep moving forward. So again, just like those internal upskilling programs, not only do we have that at assist um, with our Navigate program, Emerging Leaders, but we are our team pilots, um, we call them upskilling opportunities. So looking at those in-demand roles and then um, providing educational didactic and hands-on learning opportunities to gain those skills and those certifications to continue moving your careers. Um, so we are looking at different programs to launch in the Illinois area. We are launching a culinary apprenticeship program in January. So that would be to be a chef. Um, so an earn while you learn model. And that one is the application is out and that one is launches. Another example of something that might be coming down the line is our surgical processing or sterile processing to surgical tech um, program. So again, once you get your foot in that door, that would be, I like the phrasing of it, Eddie, your programs to keep moving forward. Um, so growing and advancing in your career. Uh, Celeste asked, would it be possible to shadow someone in the psychiatric residency program? I'm not sure, Anna. Um, that I don't know, but um, Celeste, let me go back and I will um, copy this link into, oh, God, I have too many things open right now. So let me copy this link into the chat there for you um, so you can have it. Um, because uh, that they, the contact information would be on there for you. Oh, now I explain the Google chat. Um, so that is that contact information. Thank you for asking that question. Um, so shadowing, obviously COVID has changed a little bit of it, but certain areas and realms are um, opening up a little bit um, as they know um, there's some requirements for it and other things like that. Um, so the, there is a contact information with the person who runs that, that program um, you can, um, and a way to reach out to her on that website. Um, so thank you for asking that. Um, and I did just put that link in that chat there. Yeah, there's um, another question. How has the hospital evolved during the pandemic? Great and question. I mean, if you you worked for Advocate before the pandemic started, I didn't start till April, so you might want to at least let you start with this one. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, our president and CEO, Jim Scott, always says that we are a safe clinical enterprise, and that has remained throughout the pandemic um, and will remain continuing with our long term goals as well. So we want our safe clinical enterprise to apply to not only our patients, our team members and also our visitors. So really. Um, a, the biggest impact on our patients um, and how we've evolved is our visitation policy, as I'm sure every hospital has as well. That's the biggest sort of evolve that we've had to change to navigate this. Um, we've pivoted a lot, but um, at the end of the day, um, we want to be safe for our patients. 
So all of the decisions and how we navigate the pandemic is to make sure that we are safe clinical enterprise first and foremost. Um, so that's the biggest way that we have changed. Um, but I would be remiss if I didn't also say telemedicine. Um, that sort of as, in, as healthcare as a whole has really changed to be able to meet our, our patients in a safe, safe way. Um, so great question for that. Warren, anything else to add? Um, no, as I said, I started in April, so I went from working frontline in the pandemic to working from home during the pandemic, and it was just, it was an interesting adjustment to see what Advocate had done. So we immediately shut down all auxiliary services, so things like human resources, um, and pushed everybody to work from home just to have as few people uh, coming in contact with other people as possible. I know that when Anna and I are trying to do some of our site things, it's a little more difficult because we still have restrictions, um, and we, I think we've been on the forefront of those restrictions and not really lifting them as other people lifted restrictions because at the end of the day, we are still healthcare. Uh, and so we're gonna be at a higher risk than everybody else is. So just keeping an eye on that and making sure that we're doing everything we can to keep both our patients and our employees safe. Mm -hmm. um, there are some standards that have been put in place across the system. So like, even though Anna and I work from home, if either of us were to catch COVID and have no symptoms, we still would not be allowed to work because it's a policy for everybody. And understanding that even though we work from home, it's still the same risk as somebody who doesn't. And so I just think things like that and making sure that the company as a whole is functioning together has been really important. Mm -hmm. um, there is, I know it is 1230. So we had our half an hour session and then people can sort of um, go back for, for other things, but um, so feel free to do that. But we do have um, another question. I'm interested in laboratory research that the hospital is involved in. Awesome, we have a very robust research institute, um, the Advocate Aurora Research Institute. That is not something that Warren and I are deeply familiar with, but I do know that they have a webpage um, with more information on that. Um, and it is something that um, we have a dedicated and very awesome team um, that does that. And it looks like if I can read his mind more, I'm going to pull, try to find that website, put into that chat. Um, but it is called our Research Institute. I just put the link in the chat. Thank you so much. And so it looks like the Research Institute is mostly based through the Aurora side. So it's going to be in Wisconsin. Um, but for anybody who's from the Chicago area, it's not that far away. If you're going to do like a day or two or a weekend, uh, it's something that would be very doable. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as people are popping in, please feel free to reach out with questions. Um, I am going to go back just so on the screen, we have our health career map as people are coming in um, and out of our booth. Um, uh, and I and Warren, I know this was something our booth also does. We do have a video in it, so you can always check the video out at it. Um, and we have some pictures of all of our, our hospital sites. That's not, again, not all of our points of care. Um, and a handout that does sort of state some of our employee benefits um, as a great organization to work for. Um, but I wanted to again throw this out. Our people are coming in and out. And thanks for coming. I know you're just here for the $50 gift card. Just kidding. So Warren, if they go to every booth and ask a question and like it, um, they get entered into a drawing for a $50 gift card. Um, so again, I'm just throwing this up here. Um, feel free to come off mute. This is at the end of our formal presentation, but we're wanting to hear um, what you guys want to know about. We're happy to talk about it. We're here for you. Um, we're here to, to listen to elevator speeches. We're here to answer any questions. Um, so, so jump in. So Warren, not to make you do it twice, but if you want to, with um, the group that we have here, go over this health career map. Um, and the reason Warren and I put this up here um, is to show that um, now is the time when you're in college um, and you're looking at what you want to go. You're not sort of stuck in that one, one track. So we want to show um, some flexibility within that. Um, at the beginning, Warren and I shared our elevator speeches and how we've taken um, our career path to get it. And we've definitely jumped um, levels in this. So we show this as a map. Um, Warren, you used a great example. It's not a ladder because it's not always straight up. You can jump around. Um, so with um, the, the people that we have at our booth now, um, I'm going to have Warren go over this. But again, feel free to type in the chat. Come off mute. We are here for you. We'd love to hear from you. 
Absolutely. Uh, so this career map is just basically the way that you can leverage the size of our organization. We have over 74,000 employees. And for a lot of people, that's like, oh my God, that's huge. But that's actually an advantage because what it means is as your career is advancing, especially as you're young and you're advancing quickly, uh, you don't have to continuously move to do that. So kind of think of this as like in college where you have X amount of years to finish and however you want to change your major, you can kind of do that. And if you want to keep it simple, you can make sure it relates. But if you want to go to something completely different, and that's also an option. And so we break it down into four tracks just for organization's sake. So you have nursing, you have non-nursing patient care, professional, and then support services. And so what this means is it works horizontally. So you start in the nursing track, you can finish in the nursing track. If you start in non-nursing, you can finish in non-nursing, but you do not have to. Uh, we always imagine this like four lanes on a highway where if I want to move from lane one to lane four, it's possible. Um, I just have to maybe be a little careful and make smart decisions when I do it. And so a lot of those decisions involved maybe talking to a mentor, maybe participating in some of our upskilling internal programs, uh, maybe using our educational assistance, which we call Edisys, to get another degree in a different department. Uh, one of the things we shared earlier is a lot of the people who work in the professional track are former nurses. And so a lot of them had a BSN. They worked as a nurse in other organizations in our organization that then decided they didn't want to have that direct patient contact anymore. So maybe they went and got another bachelor's in business or they got a master's in business and now they work on the human resources side or the administrative side still in the nursing program. Or you go completely left and you go, I want to work in human resources now because I'm just tired of medicine, but I like working in healthcare. You have that option as well. Some of these positions, it may require a degree or a certification to move. Other positions, just a little bit of experience you can move. If you are somebody who has a bachelor's degree in business and you start as a customer service rep, or you're in support services because you've been in support services, there isn't much extra that you have to do to move to the professional track because you already have the things that you need. It's just a matter of making those connections. And the most important thing is that, like I said, moving around is going to be much easier. I shared in my career spiel that I've had to move around four or five times since I graduated because in order to move up, I had to leave. And we don't want you all to have to do that. And so having a large organization means that there's lots of internal opportunity for you to move without having to leave. And then, and it looks like there was a question. It was about shadowing in the psychiatric residency program. Mm -hmm. So um, as I'm typing the question, um, uh, currently we do, we do have a pause on all shadows across, um, but it's not such a black and white answer for certain programs do require a shadow for admittance to it. Um, so there are case-by-case -case situations where it could be approved, but generally we are on pause with that. Um, and I didn't finish my sentence in the chat, but we are building some structure on doing virtual shadows. Um, so keeping that in mind. And somehow my chat just, it doesn't delete it once I type it. So then I just keep going. So to finish that sentence in the chat, there are some structures to do a virtual shadow as well. So again, great questions. Keep on Keep on bringing them, bringing them to us. Um, come off mute, come off camera, answer, we can answer any questions. There's some stuff going on in the Zumba app, see what it looks like. The round table, I mean, the round table sessions are also open, so that would be under your agenda tab. Um, the Zibber booth will still be open. Yep, so um, the organizing team said that the round tables are now open. Um, sorry, I kept getting a notification that that was there. Did I leave our booth one? Uh, no, it looks like you said, should you leave the booth? No, I think I did to look at the messages. Um, oh, yeah, if you don't open it in a new tab, it'll make long. you leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to end our recording.